Recapping Oregon's loss in Tucson, Joey Mack and Rob Mosley here with you. A 44 to 15 final, and it seemed like it just never got going for the Ducks. Arizona came out fired up, and Oregon had to play catch up, and ultimately weren't able to come back and win it. Yeah, the goal was to get off to a fast start after obviously the, the first half at Washington State, and it just didn't happen. And um, unfortunately, Ducks are getting a little predictable, I think, on offense. Uh, the inability to run the ball. Uh, early in drives uh, makes you predictable on that drive. When you fall behind, it makes you predictable a little bit uh, in your play calling uh, as you try to catch up and, and throw the ball. It's putting a lot of pressure on Justin Herbert. Um, and so that's, you know, as you move forward, that's really a focal point, figuring out how to reestablish the run. Um, you know, two weeks after that Washington game, uh, the Ducks were dominant and, and it looked like, uh, you know, the, the, the stamp had put, been put on this program in terms of its new direction. Um, that, that's gone by the wayside, so uh, got to get back on track for sure. There's no doubt that injuries take a toll. Guys have been banged up, reshuffling on the offensive line, and Coach said going into this game that all three of those running backs, Antonio Brooks-James, Travis Dye, and C.J. Verdell would see the ball. I think we saw that, but yeah. they just, again, could never really get it going, and it's kind of what happens when you get to this point in the season, guys are banged up. For sure. You know, and it might, I, I know you, you, you want to give Tony Brooks-James a chance, and, and you feel like both Dye and Verdell have earned opportunities. Um, you know, it might be a case where for the sake of everybody, you, you just say, hey, one guy's going to be the guy and a couple other guys are, are not going to get the carries they want. But, you know, maybe for the sake of establishing that rhythm we're talking about, maybe you need to go with a back. Um, you know, I think we all thought maybe CJ Verdell was that guy a couple weeks ago, and, um, but, but still the carries have been split. Um, and so, yeah, that could be something moving forward. You know, a decision has to be made there. The offensive line, yeah, I think um, I really thought that the, the depth and talent of this offensive line was such that it would weather uh, these injuries a little bit better than it has. Um, obviously, losing Panay Sewell uh, ha has been a big deal. Dallas Warmack clearly been playing hurt the last couple weeks. I think another guy or two on there. Starters have been playing hurt as well. Jacob Capra, Brady Aiello coming in, um, you know, trying to, to not let the let the group miss a beat, but uh, just it's, it's just not the same. And, and again, Mario Cristobal talked after the game. You know, you, you were used to being in second and six, third and short. Um, you know, he didn't say this, but it, you know, now it feels like you're in second and eight, third and eight, um, and then you know, they they know you're throwing the ball, and, and they can adjust their coverage accordingly, and and adjust the pass rush accordingly. And I, um, I do think Justin Herbert the last couple weeks too is just you know, the clock in his head is ticking a little quicker in terms of sure. I got to get rid of the ball. I'm not as comfortable in the pocket, and, and that's affecting the passing game as well. It all rolls into it. What we're yeah. talking about, yeah. three for sixteen on third downs for the Ducks. Yeah. But when you're in third and long, that's a tough thing yeah. to do. Yeah, and you know there was there, there were some third and short situations that weren't that weren't converted as well. But yeah, just. Overall, the general sense of things, I think, is that, you know, just you kind of got to the point where you knew the Ducks were throwing the ball. Um, and, yeah, you know, the, 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 that's a lot of pressure on the receivers, too. I mean, they got to be perfect in their routes to get open. You know, we've talked about even, even Dylan Mitchell, you know, not a guy who's just explosively fast or, you know, coming out of his cuts. Uh, so these guys got to work really hard technically, fundamentally, to get themselves open. And, um, and, and Mario Cristobal said that as well after the game. You know, it's not about charting up new plays. It's not about changing who you are. It's just doing what you do better. And yeah, I, I, you know, I think we knew this team's margin of error. While we knew the ceiling was potentially high for this, this team, we also knew the margin of error was probably going to be thin. Sure. Um, I think we've seen, you know, two weeks ago, it felt like that high ceiling w was there. Now we're seeing how thin that margin truly was. Defensively, some of your thoughts on yeah. the Ducks' defensive performance. It seemed like they started a little slow, but started to get some things going later. Yeah, you know, starting, uh, you know, get, getting an early pick obviously helped, and then uh, you know, all those situations where you're forced field goals instead of touchdowns when you're backed up, um, you know, just it, it kept hope alive. I mean, it kept this feeling going that hey, there, there's still there's time to get back into this. And particularly with the way things clicked at Washington State, it was like all right, if you can hang, if you defense can kind of keep them hanging around, hanging around, offense can make some adjustments, get some things going the way it did in Pullman. Uh, this this could be a, a, an entirely different game, but unfortunately, the yeah, offense just never got on track, and you know, defense did I think wear down a little bit. You know, I'm sure from a morale perspective, um, when you make those stops and then it can't, doesn't get converted offensively into points to get you back in the game, that hurts you. But you know, from a depth perspective, um, not having Austin Fowley, mm -hmm. not having Isaac Slade Matautia, neither of those guys at all. Uh, Kalana Pelu limited to just a handful of reps. Lamar Winston only played special teams and only in the second half due to a suspension. Guys like Adrian Jackson, Samson New, um, Gary Baker. Baker with a heck of a game with seven tackles. Drew, but Drew Fowley, who made his debut. Sione Cava was in there quite a bit. You know, you're leaning on guys uh, you weren't necessarily counting on having to lean on right now. And those guys are, uh, you know, being forced into tough situations. Now, hey, they're scholarship kids. 
go in and go in and make plays. But you know, it is it, it does tax your depth uh, in, in a lot of different ways. So uh, it was a challenge for them, and it felt like the second half kind of the dam finally broke a little bit. And now it's a bounce back with UCLA yeah. in town. Of course, a certain visor wearing coach yeah. will be back on the sidelines. There's a lot of external things going on. You and I were just talking even before we pressed record here. There's not a lot of guys on this Duck team that really were with Chip Kelly. Yeah. There's yeah, very I mean, few that know him at all. Yeah, nobody obviously was here when he when he left, but you know, just would have known him as, as recruits. Mm -hmm. You know, Brooks James, um, Matrell McGraw, Jalen Jelks, Justin Hollins, maybe from from camps they attended or things like that, right. but not a, a lot of overlap. But I, you know, you just reflect on kind of where where Chip Kelly's reputation was and where Oregon football was when he left here. You know, you're coming off that 2012 year that a lot of people thought was, you know, like the best season in school history, arguably, yeah. you know, the only loss, that, that controversial overtime loss to Stanford. Um, now, fast forward, you know, a little over five years later, um, UCLA is the worst offense in the Pac-12, both by points and by yardage. And obviously he's got some recruiting to do there. He's only in his first year. Um, but the Ducks now, um, you know, the, the postseason looks tenuous, you know, and, and, and maybe for the second time in three years, the postseason is, is a question mark. And who would have thought Oregon football would be there too? So. Um, certainly not the path I think anybody foresaw for Chip Kelly or Oregon football uh, when he left here. It does make you look back and really appreciate just how magical that was and how hard that was. Um, but also two programs that expect to get back to that, th mm -hmm. that, that sort of level as well. And um, so a, a, a big game for both in, in, in sort of charting their future courses. It's a fascinating side by side to yeah. look at them with everything that's happened. Yeah. Uh, the Ducks will kick off against UCLA trying to bounce back after their 44 to 15 loss to Arizona. It's a 430 kickoff on Fox. The Ducks taking on the Bruins at Autzen Stadium on Saturday.